Hey, we're here at Certified Angus Beef with my good friend Michael, great chef. He is but a great friend. And we have got you a new holiday tradition. What is it? Pitchfork prime rib deep fried. It don't get no better than this, so get the grease hot. We're coming to you. You know, today we are gonna do a prime rib a little different and say, who doesn't like to change up Thanksgiving or Christmas? This is what I'm talking about. When you can deep fry a ribeye for Christmas or Thanksgiving, you done up the game and Santa gonna bring you more presents. And as usual, everything that we use will be listed down below in the little description. Shan always takes care of us. So Michael, you've really got my excitement level built right up to the top with this prime rib. This is a unique experience. I don't do a lot of cast iron cooking. Um, I don't do a lot of pitchfork work, yeah. but we're gonna put a pitchfork into a prime rib and put it into a, a deep fried situation. Yeah. I'm familiar with taking a prime rib, and that's what this would be if we had the bone attached. Right? Yes. So a true prime rib would be bone attached. So we separated the ribs, which are back ribs, yes. from the ribeye itself, which is simple as that. And we took some tail off, some excessive fat, yes. we took that off. But then what else did we do to the rest of this? So we took as a coarse ground pepper and a coarse ground salt. We mixed that up really well together and I mean we coated it well because a big piece of meat like All this, over. you gotta get it coated really well. Then we went ahead, took that pear knife, run us some holes deep down in there, split garlic in half, pushed them way down in there. and I do love me some fried garlic, and I'll tell you what happens. If it pops out during the frying process, that is what you call hors d'oeuvre. You just lay that right I up like here, it. let it that's cool off. That's a big French word for you. Uh-huh. Hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> so, a lot of folks maybe can do this at home, but there's some that, hey, they're gonna be a little afraid to separate that rib back there, but the butcher man can do it, or he the woman that's you. working behind that counter, because we've said it in other educational videos, don't be afraid to ask don't that be man. Let me ask you a question. Let's let's share. Why did we take the back ribs off to begin with? Well, we're going to have a better cook time over here on the back, and then we're going to cook sooner. I'm going to call it the delicate dessert that I'm going to have before the meal. And this gives us a chance to get that yes. deep fried crust all the way around it. But are you are you good with rope, my friend? I, it, rope. I, am I good with roping? Yeah. Like, like there you go. Roping? Yes. That's about as close as I get. Well, I have roped a lot of stuff and have tied you? up a lot of things, but most of them were alive when I done it. So. <laughs> I'm, I half hitch this as we go along with one string and you have oh, one you long one. long one. Yes. Pull her down tight, tie her one more time because this is the first one. This is an important one. This right here. Oh, okay, all right. right. Okay, I see this. I know this technique. And then That's we're just smart. gonna come along, make sure, I try to keep these all at the same place every time. I have roped many living creatures in my life and I have tied up a few dead animals. And I really like to take these because if we didn't tie this up, what would happen, you think? Well, I think it might split open. That cap might start separating yeah. from the, the eye itself. I think the, the, the dead meat cooperates a little more than the live animal. Yes, it does. Yeah. And just in case... That's struggling going on. And do you think we need one more on the front? Yeah, it might flare open a little. Yeah. So we'll just run him around there with a single piece of love. Pitchfork it? I think we're ready, my friend. Now, we have two pitchforks. That's a little guy. That is a little guy, and I think he should go to the little guy, don't right, you? We'll put these on the back ribs. For folks, if you're using a pitchfork, it is clean, okay? That's a now, good point. Now, if you got an old one that you're using and something like that, hey, you can get that thing hot first, take you some steel wool to it, shine that rascal right back up, and then I'd do one more thing before I stuck it through there if it was old. I'd give it a little greasing with some oil of some kind, not WD-40, not Penn's oil. I'm talking about some kind of cooking oil and run it down through there where you can get a good hope. I think that's pretty good, my friend. So. Set this one aside and we'll get this guy going. You wanna go dead center right in the middle? Yeah, because we don't necessarily want one to be on the side, do we? Huh, I don't dead think the middle, so. Right in the middle of this guy. Your hand's good, right? I don't think it's Feel gonna go nowhere. That? Yes, sir. And I think a couple inches will keep us from knowing where the bottom is. Yeah. 
So y'all might have been deep frying some turkeys, but this is like rocket science work here. We are fixing deep frying turkeys. Is that a big thing? It is in different places. Know what I mean? That's just foul. Yeah, whoa, foul. I like that, I really do. <laughs> Let's stick to beef, you know what I'm saying? Stick to beef. You know, you always hear everybody say, we're gonna fry at thrive, thrive, 350. No, we're gonna start at 375 because when you put this, and it weighed how much, Michael? What was this? This was a seven and a quarter. All right, put that in that hot oil, that temperature's gonna go down in a hurry. That's why we're starting out a little more. Let's get it over here to the hot grease and see what happens. Folks, if you're doing this, do it slowly. Don't just think you can run this thing down in there. You're gonna burn everything you got. You're gonna catch the whole house on fire. Do not attempt this in the house. If you're doing it, doing it in the backyard. Do it on a piece of concrete, even better. Them tongs is good for a reason because we can just sit right there and go in oh so easy like and it's gonna keep us off the bottom. We're gonna probably try to cook this to an internal temperature somewhere between about 87 to 90. Long in what? there? That seems so low. Yeah, but when we rest this thing, what's gonna happen? Here's what happens. It's gonna climb big time because you're used to maybe doing prime rib in the oven and maybe a hot oven, and that's a lot of energy you put on that yeah. rib. And so we know about carryover cooking. It's continued to climb. But this is extreme heat that yes. we're introducing to it, meaning the pressure's gonna be there. It's gonna keep cooking that internal temperature is going to keep rising well after we pull this out. That's right. Don't be thinking you can just let this thing go on its own because you may float to one side or you may turn over. Just leave it where it is, constantly remaining in the same spot. Well, we've been on about seven and a half minutes, probably pretty close to that. So I want viewers to know you need to keep an eye on this temp gauge. You may have to regulate your heat because we're running pretty close to what? Like 325, 325 330? 330 right Because now. you don't want to keep this at 350 throughout this cooking. You will burn something. Give me a little check on some temp and don't that look it. pretty. Oh, wow. I'm going to put a little probe down right to try to find that eye. And we're still at... 45 degrees. 45, 44, 45. So it's still pretty cold All in right. there. So we're just going to go back down and just keep frying along. We need to try to regulate that fire somewhere between 325, 335 along in there. So you may even have to have your buddy or somebody turn that out when that temp gauge gets a little high. Bring this rib. Oh, and ain't he looking pretty? Oh, Bring it up out of there and let that cool back down before you go back. So you can put a probe in that can handle the heat. So I'm targeting the center of it, so I, I use my finger as a guide to target that. And we'll just keep an eye on this temperature right now. We're at about 60 degrees. We turn this out, we'll turn it back on to where we can maintain that temperature, and it is time to turn it back on now, the way it looks, don't you think? Yeah, we're dropping, so All let's right. get that back up. So my friend, we have reached that internal temperature of about 82, yes, 82 about right. degrees. We still got this good color going on here. We've been on pretty close to 32 or three minutes at this point, but it is time to put our snack in there, wouldn't you think? I think so. I don't think this will take much time. No, it won't take much time. I'll do the so same idea. We'll slowly put this back rib in here. And we'll get us some goodness going on. And as light as he is, we might could take him off the floor and let him float. That's and when a good he comes, let's just go ahead and just get some tongs and pull him That's off. A great idea. He'll float when he's done. Well, we got our little buddy in there joining this in here, and we're probably pretty close to what, 87, 88 degrees? Exactly. And so I think it's time for this thing to come out of there and pull that probe. That's hot. Yeah, I mean, I that. we're going to let a little less grease run off the excess edge. I'm going to put it right up here on this cutting board. We're going to tin it 20 to 25 minutes because we want that temp to come up to about 125 to 130. Good. There we go. So, we've put up a lot of tents in our life, haven't we? <laughs> Let's go ahead and run him there, but it's 
want to close him just a little where he's still getting a little circulation, but we can capture that heat. You this think that'll work? Oklahoma wind. I yeah. think you can leave it like Ohio wind, just oh, a little bit. That is tent. Ohio there. Ohio with... wind is, is just a little tent. Okay. So we're going to let this set probably 20 to 25 minutes, probably closer to that 20 than the 25 to get that internal temperature to come up there. We'll check it. Somebody has got us a time on the mark. These little fellers been in about an eight to a 10 minute cook time, Michael, but me and you both know we're going more visual on this than we are time. Ooh. And look at that the pulling away, away there effect. I mean, things is good and see how that's got that good shine. You can see that bone all the way through. What's it say on that little dial in 25 minutes? 121. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that is what I call rare. That's what we're after. The, Ideal rare. Yes. yes. Because when I think when we Should unveil we this that? magic piece of meat here, look at there. I mean, look at the goodness there. You get to please the whole family here because we're going to have a little dunner on the both ends. True. Everyone's got those people in the family, the medium well oh, people, yes. well done people. Why don't I just go ahead and take this and slice right through here? Give us a snack. Give us a little cuts like butter. Looky there. Mm. And while that was sitting there, when it come right out, we went ahead and brushed us a little barbecue sauce on there. You can top this with whatever you want. Mm. But you need to put that on there right when it comes off so you're gonna get that good sort of caramelized glazing effect. Mm. Let's give a recap of what we did right. here. Temperature wise in the, in the cast iron, right. we kept that at Above 300, we were riding at 325 as yep. our sweet spot, right? Yep. The temperature of the roast itself, we kept a probe in there for an internal temperature and we targeted what? About 87. 87 is when we, yep. is the temperature we pulled yep. it. And it probably, if we was guesstimate time, Michael, we probably went 30 to 35. 30 to 35 minutes, minutes, minutes in the end is about what it yep. took us. But you want to make sure that you, you got that probe in there. And if your oil gets too hot, hey, you've seen us do it. Pull that thing out, let that oil cool off a little, go back in there because we don't want to crisp this up any more than what it already is. And we rested 25 minutes to get to a temperature of about 120, 122. Those folks that want it to be 130 to 135, they want to take that internal temperature to what? 95, 95 to 100. Okay. And then when you go ahead and let's tin it just like we did always, and then their actual rest time may cut back closer to that 20 minutes because that internal temperature is already hotter than what we started with. I see, so it so, might take less yeah. time. Okay, let's see what the end looks like. Hear that when you cut? The mm. crispy. Oh yes. You know, I used a serrated knife because I knew we'd be pretty crispy on the outside. Looky there. So we're pretty more done on more we're done on the outside. Let's yep. let's take a couple more slices in and see what Oh, I like how your garlic cloves stay. Yes, in here. they I stay. thought those garlic cloves would have jumped. They you I get it they you get in jumped. there pretty deep, they'll be good. Now you'll see a difference as we begin to get in color how much more that Sweet red begins right. to show out oh. all the way. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm after. So That's gorgeous. Yes. But I always find that the outside's just not giving me the crust I yeah, like. And yeah. this is the technique. Ooh, that is to it. Get the back. new holiday tradition. The new holiday tradition. Yes. Prime rib in the deep fry. Yes. I mean, it don't get no better than that, my friend. And you want a bite of this, right? I do, Michael. I do want a bite of that just piece. Go hands in. Mm. I'm going back for a little crispy on now. <clears throat> mm. Mm. That's the stuff. There you go. That's do it. Stuff. Do it with. Mm -huh. Yes, sir. This is That's what's good. happening. The crust, the flavor. You get that salt pepper, but I actually get that garlic. It I sort tasted of, that garlic right away. It bled through there to where you get that perfect mm. taste. And mm. don't buy that turkey at Thanksgiving or Christmas. Just go ahead and get this prime rib, deep frying. We hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed this. And remember. It's about bringing food and family together. That's what it is, whether it's a holiday or not, we're truly blessed that we can share this with people yes, and get sir. to eat. That is what it's about. And as always, tip my hat to all the servicemen and women and veterans who keep that old flag flying wherever Thank we're you. at because they have paid the sacrifice they have and they've made this what this is about and that is sharing food, family, and a great time. Be sure now that you hit like and subscribe as we go along. We don't want you to miss out on it. Thank you, Michael. A pleasure and, and the, honor. And the certified Angus Beef family has treated us so well. We hope you enjoyed this. God bless you, each and every one. And I'll see you down the trail with a new holiday tradition.